welcome to the Derwent Valley in Derbyshire. So that's a familiar spot over my shoulder, isn't it? The old High Peak Junction, Crumford and High Peak Railway Workshop, something I'm very familiar with. Done a lot of filming here. I better not call it High Peak Junction, haven't I? It gets a few people hot under the collar when you refer to it as that. Um, if you want to know more about the real High Peak Junction, watch episode one of my Cromford and High Peak Railway series. But we're not here to do Disused Railways today. We're not here for the Cromford and High Peak Railway today. Today we're here for the Cromford Canal. Of course, this area, the Derwent Valley, all the mills, rich in history. Um, it's a World Heritage Site. All sorts going on here. Obviously, I've mentioned already the Cromford and High Peak Railway that we know very well. Um, the Cromford Canal, which we also know well. All the historic mills in this area. So much history and it's all interwoven together. So we're just having a, a walk up to where we'll, we'll pick up this disused canal arm. And I'll be telling you a little bit about it as we make our way down it. A um, couple of things to show you on the way to it though it's for a change i'm walking down the, the canal towpath i'm usually I'm usually over that side that's the old that's the old wharf so that's the original uh, that's the original end of the railway the cromford and ip railway that's where it met the canal before it was extended to meet with the midland railway a little bit further on just about to appear around the corner now it's coming into view something very interesting that I'll tell you a little bit about just starting to be visible through the trees that's the Leewood pump house do you remember I don't know if you watched um, the episode that I did up the Cromford and I Peak Railway, we got to the Middleton Top Engine House. We were fortunate enough to visit on a day when it was working. Now that old engine house up at Middleton Top is powered by compressed air. These were obviously steam powered engines in these engine houses. And I believe this one is still uh, still powered by, uh, by steam, which is fantastic. Now we're not fortunate enough to to be visiting today on a day that, where the, the, the engine house is open and it's working. It is a quiet, gloomy Thursday in February, so I didn't realise that the old engine in the pump house was built at Elsica in South Yorkshire. And that that you see behind me there, that came into use in 1850. So the reason for that pump house was to keep the canal uh, topped up with water because if I just tip you over the edge here we're on top of an aqueduct so that's the river derwent down there that's the pump house just to the side there so for one day a week the local mill owners allowed the Cromford canal to refill uh, refill the canal from the river derwent down there only from 8 p.m saturday to 8 p.m sunday so i believe they didn't want water being taken away from the river doing because it might so obviously they're powering their mills from the river as well there was a little bit protective of that water source i've hurriedly brushed past this aqueduct this beautiful aqueduct it just sits by the side of the pump house obviously like i've just said this crosses the the river derwent just below just below there And just reading from the Friends of the Cromford Canal website, it says because of the restrictions of the hours when the mill owners allowed water to be pumped into the canal, the pump was built seven times larger than would normally be needed. So they were basically trying to pump a week's worth of water in one day. That's what that's, uh, that's basically saying. And another interesting, uh, uh, no, I didn't realise this, the Cromford Canal was built slightly deeper than it normally would be built just to allow it to hold more water because they're not getting that chance to top it up are they so it was in use until just after the second world war um after which time it laid derelict but like like i've just been saying it has been um it has been restored and you can see it working on some days so straight off the aqueduct 
um, we come to this beautifully restored aqueduct cottage uh, it was restored over the year uh, the last couple of years if you see the before and after photos absolutely astounding and this just by the cottage because this was the uh it was the lock keepers or the uh, the gatekeepers cottage because this is the entrance to the disused canal that we're going to be looking at today it's the leeward arm of the cromford canal also known as the, the nightingale branch of the canal i'll come on to the reasons behind that uh, give you some more information as we make our way up the old the old canal um, which come over this little swing bridge followed by these swans no food for you so you can see in that direction this signpost telling us it's three and a half miles to Ambergate half a mile back to where we started by the uh, Crumford and I Peak workshops and half mile up to Lee Bridge so it's really not a long arm of the canal really let's just, uh, let's just have a quick look at this cottage let's just turn our attention to that little swing bridge that we just crossed in the weeks between filming this video and editing the swing bridge was open for the first time since at least the 1980s. This all links into the plans to restore the gate to the Leeward branch, which we'll see the original location of shortly. It's hoped that the replacement gate can now be floated down the canal. Just admiring the aqueduct. From another angle, you don't really get to appreciate just how nice that aqueduct is when you're, uh, when you're on, on top, when you're walking over it. Yeah, so the cottage, um, built in 1802, it says it was built as a lengthman and lock keeper's cottage um, by local industrialist Peter Nightingale, we'll get onto that in a moment. Kind of got into a derelict state after the 1960s when it was no longer, it was no longer used, but doesn't it look fantastic today? Right, okay, I think we've spent quite a, um, enough time upon the main bit of the Cranford Canal, haven't we? Let's have a... Let's have a walk, let's investigate this, this disused canal section. This first little section just past the cottage um, is, so I'm assuming there's a lock here, I'm just looking. I think there is, there's a, obviously there's this bricked up um, walkway over the canal now but that does look to be different different levels whether or not that was originally the case so yeah i'm not sure if there was a lock lock in here but you can see here where the sluice gates would have fitted look you see on this side swing you over there that's reflection there and we have got these these steel things sticking up out of the ground it is these little bits of detail that I do like looking for on these disused, disused canals. Ah, so that, yeah, so that's, there's something to do with the old gate, aren't they? If we just have a look around here, I'm fine. I'm seeing more stuff now, I'm getting down to this level. What we can see, but that's where the gate there and these two little holes i'd love to see a photograph i've not seen one as of yet of when that gate used to be there so yeah this first section we're going to see is uh is in water still at the moment okay i should have read this shouldn't i before i start filming that last little section so um just again i'm using today as a, as a kind of guide to the, the walk down this issue i'm the friends of Cromford Canal website so I'll leave a I'll leave a link to that so 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 yeah this canal arm was built in 1802 or it opened in 1802 by Peter Nightingale now I said that name didn't I earlier he was the great uncle of the famous Florence Nightingale which everybody's heard of Florence Nightingale strong ties to the area so it does tell you about those stone 
built narrows that we've just it calls them narrows that we've just been over looking at um just next to the uh, next to the cottage and the recesses for the stop gates are clearly visible so it's not a lock i was wrong there sorry should have really checked this first so they were the recesses for the stop gates and that walkway that we saw it was acting as a as a dam from the main the main part of the canal that used to be in that location a swing bridge so here we are just walking along the towpath it's only a little short section this that's uh, that's still in water hopefully I, well not hopefully i know it is because i've walked down here but uh, we we can get a closer look at the old cutting without the water in as well just for a little bit of a little bit of contrast but we're just approaching here as you can see that's the end of the water this was the site of another aqueduct and it was an aqueduct so just looking back where we've that short distance to the cottage there it's an aqueduct over the middle and railway look now lots to uh, lots to unpack here so that's the tunnel is it leewood tunnel i think i can't remember the name of it now um obviously that's your that's your derby amber gate matlock railway line double track at one time but just single track now so the canal's crossing over the top of the railway here forgive me i can't remember the year that the railway arrived it was 1840 something I'll check that and put it on the screen. And then, like I say, there's so many layers, there's so many things to unpack here. The River Derwent's by the side here, going under the railway line. So we've got river, railway, canal, just stacked, stacked on top of one another. And if I show you just from this angle, if you can just get an idea, we're perched high on an embankment here. This canal's perched onto an embankment right above the river down there look that is some drop that is a sheer cliff face there there's some drop down to that river i can tell you so just bring you back onto where the aqueduct was that's a, a, obviously a, the replacement footbridge but we can see look you can see the old um, abutments over the railway line now it was an iron trough aqueduct now interestingly there are it seems to be a different period of brickwork on show here so there's a what looks to be more blue brick you can see whether it's been widened or some bits have been added at some stage then you can see on the tunnel side look it's a lot different type of stonework a lot a lot older isn't it more in keeping with the um, with the wall there so the purpose of this little arm off the Cromford Canal was to access the mills and the smelting works just up uh, just up near Lee Bridge so is it lead was carried by boat the short distance from Lee Wharf to the Cromford and High Peak Railway, which we know arrived in the 1820s. And that lasted well into the 20th century, while coal was delivered to Lee Mills from Hart Hartsey up until the 1930s. Right, so we've crossed the aqueduct over the railway line. Let's have a look at the canal without the water then. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get down into the, uh, into the cut of the canal. It's looking very boggy down there. But I think disused canals uh, are absolutely fantastic. Some of the disused bits around the Chesterfield um, canal, you can really see, gives you a good chance to see the uh, the engineering and the, um, just like this, just being able to, just to see, see the cutting and look at that, look at the retaining wall there. This is extremely, extremely boggy. I don't know what, um, what clay's left underfoot down here? I can tell you, my uh, my foot just went down a good two inches there. So I'm not going to delve any further over at this point. Um, but yeah, but look at that, look at that retaining wall. Right, let's get back up on this towpath and just walk a little bit 
look a little bit further so we've still got the extremely unpleasant drop down there look down to the down to the river and there's the railway bridge going over the river derwent i thought the i thought the cutting might dry out a little bit but it's actually getting boggy actually got a little bit of water quite a lot of bit of water looking in front for the majority of its life the, the branch only went up as far as the wharf we're about to uh, that we're about to come up onto now however that's not always been the terminus up until 1819 it actually went in uh, into Lee Bridge it doesn't now and I don't know what evidence of the remains that's a long time ago isn't it that's over 200 years ago um, and I don't think there's much to show you past past the wharf I mean, it is a beautiful walk now I mean how many how many people walk down here and don't realize that they're walking along the side of something with such historical importance and we're still up on this shelf look still up on this shelf and you can see the stonework just down there on that supporting wall for the canal how many years old is that? 122 years old. That maths took a lot longer than it really should have done in my head. 1802 to 2024. Um, but still standing, still standing strong today, isn't it? After all that time, everything that nature chucks. So we're coming up to the wharf, I can see. Um, just about to go through some gates. Friends of the Cromford Canal website describe this as a pleasant walk to the wharf at the terminus. It's hard to argue with that. It's not, it's not a very long walk, but it's a nice walk. At the wharf entrance, there is a small stone building on the towpath. I'll show you that in a moment. Note that this incorporates a stone gate post with the familiar grooves worn by the horse boat tow lines. And this is what they're referring to. It's a little building there. What the building was, was actually for. And here's the gate post that it's referring to. And there we have look. Can you see the, the grooves from the rope? The rope lines it's really brilliant there and look as we're coming into the wharf noisy motorbikes out today you can see that you can see the stonework on the side of the wharf just starting see that we've even got some little eyes look still Life sticking out the ground there, fantastic. So it says there would have been a gate across the towpath here to keep the wharf secure. The wharf Fingers Stone Cottage, strange name, um, has been extended to make an attractive private residence. We'll see that in a moment. On the edge of the wharf, signs of the iron turntable for the crane can still be discerned. So we'll go and have a look at what that is. So we're just walking through the wharf now. You can see the old, the old brick. I'm assuming these are the original ones. They don't look. They look pretty weathered. And here's those remains. That little old iron turntable look. Still in the old original stonework on the floor. Isn't that fantastic? It is actually. You can see there is an old photograph here. Look, so get through the trees. You see, see the crane there, yeah, and then a photograph of the wharf as well. A little picture representation right right next door to it and there's the old there's the old building we won't pry too much because that is a is a private residence um, 
and we'll follow it up here as far as we can see any evidence that, that this was a canal. I've walked through here numerous times and I always think what a, what a beautiful spot um, it would be to live. So I don't know how far a little bit of canal um, does go. We can still see the, the edge of the wharf there, look. It's now got a little bit of running, running water through, through there. So we're still seeing quite obvious signs that this is still a canal cutting. But it looks like there is a wall around here. Let's get around this, this boggy stuff and uh, just show you there. There's a wall right at the end here. So this must have been where it originally terminated. So that's the end. That's the end of the uh, of the bit that was navigable in its uh, in its heyday. I'll have a walk up into Lee Bridge just to show you where the canal did go anyway. So again, from the friends of the Cromford Canal website, I'll just read you what they tell us about this remaining section. I can see Lee Bridge straight in front. Actually, it's really not far. So the the branch terminates shortly beyond what was the wharf but it was originally twice as long reaching Lee Bridge, which we'll see in a moment. Following a dispute over water supply, it was truncated and the wharf relocated to where we've just seen. Thanks ever so much for watching this video. Um, special thanks to um, the friends of the Cromford Canal. Um, if you've been using their website as a bit of a guide, um, they're always great at sharing my videos. Um, they've given me a lot of uh, exposure over the last few years and all the videos I've done around the Cromford Canal. So cheers, cheers guys. Really useful information on the, on the website there if you ever are looking for a bit of a, a guide for this walk. So as always, thanks to all my channel members, anyone who supports me, anyone who buys me a coffee, sends me super thanks, anyone who watches the videos, really, really is appreciated. So thanks once again, take care and we'll see you soon.